Today I want to take a few minutes uh, to describe these basic sepsis issues in newborn patients. Now, neonatal sepsis, what can we say about it? It's one of the most common causes of mortality in children. And many, many babies, they become victims to this problem. The reasons are many fold. Some of them get these bacteria as they pass through the birth canal. And some of them get because of the skin infections, urinary tract infections, respiratory tract infections. So they become colonized by these, by these deadly bacteria and develop the neonatal sepsis. So that's going to be my topic today. Neonatal sepsis and meningitis. Let's talk about it. You see the newborn babies in the first three days they might get the sepsis. We call it uh, early onset sepsis and after fourth day to 90th day we call it late onset sepsis. The bacteria like group B streptococcus, Escherichia coli, Listeria monocytogens, Haemophilus influenza, and these are the major causes of uh, sepsis. We use ampicillin and gentamicin or any other aminoglycoside to treat these patients. And if you suspect meningitis, it's better to go for a third generation cephalosporin rather than an aminoglycoside. You see, if the gram stain shows gram positive cocci like uh, streptococcus pneumonia, and substituting something that covers these gram positives is important. And also the other important point is if you suspect MRSA, then go for vancomycin. Nafcillin or oxacillin or first generation cephalosporins, you can also add them for gram positive problems. Now some babies get omphalitis because of uh, enterococcus or gram-negative aerobes and aerobes, they cause this omphalitis around the umbilical cord. And you need to use clindamycin, ampicillin, aminoglycoside, or cefetoxime to cover these organisms. The basic point is, it is polymicrobial, you need to cover so many organisms, so go for broad-spectrum antibiotics. <clears throat> now, streptococcus pneumonia and uh, Neisseria meningitis are most commonly encountered in infants. HIV infection may occur in uh, unimmunized children. You have, we have HIV vaccine today, but if uh, they don't, if they didn't get the vaccine, they run the risk for HIV infection. And also, always think about mother's history, where she is coming from, what is his maternal history. Because some of these sepsis in children, you can get the focus of infection from maternal history. So prior to immunization with the vaccines effective against HIV, Persistent bacteremia and complications including meningitis were seen in approximately 50% of children infected with occult HIV bacteremia. With widespread use, today we have HIV vaccine. So it's very uncommon to see a child with occult bacteremia having a HIV infection. Same with the seven valent conjugate pneumococcal vaccine. So because of the pneumococcal vaccine today, we reduced the incidence of pneumonia like 3%. You see the point? The vaccinations are saving so many lives. The risk of bacteremia increased to 6 to 10% in younger children with progressively high fever and high W basis. That means if, they, if there is high fever, if there is a high WBC count, think about sepsis. The risk of streptococcus pneumonia, bacteremia and its complications is significantly reduced in children immunized with PCV7 vaccine. Why I am telling that is 
vaccination, the PCV7 vaccination is an important thing because this vaccine reduces the incidence of invasive pneumococcal disease by approximately 90%. So many times uh, you should uh, go by the maternal history. Is there uh, any problems during the maternal problems? Uh, th that's very important. Now, neonatal sepsis. Many in infections, when the babies uh, stay in the hospital, they come and it becomes a local issue. Some, some intensive care units, they have high rates of uh, Enterobacter cloacae. In some intensive care units, they have high incidence of Crepsiella pneumonia. In some intensive care units, they will have high incidence of MRSA. So you should go by the area. But if there is MRSA and uh, Pseudomonas, you should always go by the exact antibiotic. Now, Enterococcus fecalis, it's very common in children who have these central catheters placed inside them. Enterococcus fecalis. And coagulase is a negative staphylococci. And they are also commonly isolated in patients with uh, these intravenous catheters, indwelling catheters. So coagulase is negative staphylococci. Think of that. Because coagulase is negative staphylococcus can be a normal contaminant. On the other hand, it might be staying in the blood. Because enterococcus species and coagulase negative staphylococci commonly cause fever without significant morbidity and mortality. Many times you can start a regime without vancomycin. Because these infections, they don't have a lot of uh, mortality rate. The same thing with the Pseudomonas aeruginosa and other gram-negative uh, things, then go for third-generation cephalosporin, like ceftazidine or cefepine. Why? Because uh, Pseudomonas erysinosa, it can cause deadly infection. So go for third-generation cephalosporin. So let me give you the most important points. Take history from the mother. Our group B streptococcus status, GBS status, we usually do the culture in pregnant women when they come like 34, 35 weeks. So immediately do the GBS culture. If GBS is positive, treat the mother when she was in labor. And that's very important. If you don't treat, the baby has a very, very high risk of getting group B streptococcus and uh, neonatal sepsis. And uh, in mother's history, sometimes preterm rupture of membranes or prolonged rupture of membranes or premature rupture of membranes or high use of uh, these uh, drug drugs, all these risk factors, po poverty, they make these uh, women susceptible to group B streptococcus and their babies, they have a high risk of group B streptococcus. So group B streptococcus is the most common cause for neonatal early sepsis. Very, 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 